in the last year have been pedestrianised. So now you can walk freely without the fear of being run down, but still watch out for bicycles. But yes, uh, so I always talk about Canal Street and all those different streets. There's always a street in every city where all, where definitely all the cultures come together. And in Dublin City, that is Cable Street. So at any point of the day or any point of the week you walk down, if it's towards the weekend or in the evening, it'll be absolutely hopping. There's so many people around. There could be loads of different Asian restaurants, different cuisines from all around the world that kind of have little kind of markets in this area. There's also comic book stores, lovely kind of cafes, especially this one here, Mishmash. A lot of the cafes in Cable Street, because the buildings are very old, they're kind of small, but they're like different dimensions. You go in there and some of them have like little private, little reading rooms at the back. Some of them have really small, like little box room galleries that local artists will put their stuff in. So although they might look small on the outside, definitely go in because there's always kind of a treasure to unfold. They always have a back room somewhere where you can old Irish books or like kind of little artifacts of history. And you get a lovely coffee on the way as well. <laughs> and I guess okay, so we'll keep walking. I'll just start pointing out things. <laughs> Cable Street. If any of you are a fan of beer, if any of you are a beer connoisseur, I would recommend the Black Sheep because they import beers from all around the world. So it is a great kind of activity, kind of do your beer tasting and get drunk as a skunk. And then actually here, this is a pawn shop. But above it, you see the three golden balls? Yeah. That actually is a universal kind of sign of a pawn shop. So it's been dated back for years. So if you ever see that, you know that what's there might not be a pawn shop now, but years ago it definitely was. So that's what that means there. And actually, that's someone on a tour told me that two weeks ago. So it's great because I get to like then tell everyone else. <laughs> Yeah, we'll stop right here guys and we're gonna look down the street. You might be able to see the sign in black circle saying 1661. Yes. So that 1661, that is a lovely cocktail bar. But oh, the yeah. reason it's called 1661 is because that's the year that Putchin was banned in Ireland. Has anybody ever heard of Putchin before? No. Yes. Okay, well Putchin is our best invention of the history of time of Irish people. Pudding is an alcoholic spirit, up to towards 90% of alcohol. Wow, very risky. Yeah, if you very. sniff it, you're on the floor, basically. Yeah. No, you can die, actually. You will die. Actually, has anybody ever heard of the term being blind drunk? You can thank the Irish for that. We invented that because we literally love drink so much that we turned ourselves blind. So years ago, back, because Irish people have always loved our drink. Actually, there's been a research, research done by a researcher in Cambridge Institute, and they said back in like the 16th century, it was normal for an Irish person to drink like 16 pints a day, Whoa. which is nowadays would be very like, I would be like, I'm concerned. Are you OK? But it was normal back then because we didn't have a massive influx of food and all that. And we were working a lot on the farm, on the land. So the 16 pints was literally how we'd get our carbohydrates, our nutrients. So although it was 16 pints, it didn't it didn't have the effect with the beer belly, you know, mm -hmm. because they were working it off and they actually needed those carbs. Whereas now we're still drinking 16 pints as well as having all of our feet of food, so it's not yeah. as good. So although we do have a great traditional tradition in alcoholism, it is well founded at its conception. It's just been kind of tinkered with throughout the years. But back in those days, we had our beer or Guinness or kind of lager or stout. But when we wanted to cut some shapes and have a great time, we went on to the spirits. Mm -hmm. And our spirit of choice was Puchin. Mm -hmm. So Puchin is almost like moonshine from, from our American friends. It's very similar. It is clear in color about 90% alcohol again and actually for 90% it's smoother than you would think it's like although it will absolutely burn the face off you it goes down a lot smoother than you think but Irish people used to make their own alcohol we all used to have a uh, inner we have our little shed little distilleries we'd have our little distillation pots in our sheds at the back of our houses and all of them had the idea they wanted to make putching but the art of a distillation back then it was kind of flawed today it's been perfected Back then, when they were distilling the alcohol, they would distill what's called good alcohols mm -hmm. and bad alcohols all in one. In today's day, you're able to separate them and only drink the good alcohols. But back then, the putching was rife with bad alcohols and they would drink it and the bad alcohol actually turned them blind. Mm -hmm. So they'll never see again. But it's okay, the putching to get them so drunk that they'll see in their mind, smiling at all the colors. But it got to such a degree that people just were over overindulging in it that in 1661, they banned Putchin. 
that doesn't mean that Putchin still doesn't exist. You will find it. If you ever came down to Leitrim, to my hometown, you'll always see like a really weird shady like old Jemison bottle with a really weird liquid in it. And you sniff it and you think, what is that? And it's Putchin because people do make it kind of in secret. And then it's a lovely prized possession and they give it to their family, friends of a kind of like, of a Christmas, of a birthday. It's like a celebratory thing because it is very prominent in our culture history. But in fairness, it does have some medicinal purposes. If you're absolutely dosed with the flu, a sniff or a quick swig of it and you'll have a great night's sleep. So it can be used to your advantage in very small doses. But again, yeah, so 1661, it was banned. And this bar is Puchin themed. Now they don't sell Puchin, but they do sell cocktails with a very high percentage. And it's very, it's very glamorous. It is expensive, yes, but it's because all their cocktails are amazingly kind of created all the different, it looks like potions you're drinking. They even like garnish them sometimes with like sand or like different like cherry, like the way they, it's basically an art piece. So if you ever have a date or if you're ever in a celebratory mood, you got a, a promotion at work, you can go there for your first two, get your Instagram photos, you have a great night in Dublin, and then you can move on to a different pub that's cheaper and get absolutely locked. <laughs> so it is for your Instagrams for your date, you want to impress someone. It, it's a great pub, it's all kind of kind of Irish punching themed inside. So definitely check it out if you'd ever like to 1661.